Hi again. So um, this is part two. Uh, I should have put this in part one, but you know things happen. Uh, the oil range. So oil shows a range of biodegradation states. So one of the things that happens, as we've been talking about with oil, is that as it biodegrades, that fingerprint I talked about will sh will actually show up in there because the easily biodegraded compounds will go away, and then the more recalcitrant compounds will stick around. And so this was just an, uh, a neat study I found from the USGS where they showed, you know, the least to more degraded to more to the most degraded. And you can see how the, this is the chromatographic column of uh, uh, fingerprint of the compound. So this was the chromatogram of the thing. So you can see that like when you start off here, we've got lots of different compounds in here. And the higher number of alkanes, the high, these high number alkanes will go away first because the long chains. Um, like they like to eat those and then you get more degraded you get your these are your NLKs and then you've got these and then you when it's most recalcitrant are these mo these compounds like this so one of the compounds right here this PR it looks like this and it's got all these these uh, um, branches off of it and so we can actually age date uh, or that date but at least know if the oil that we're looking at is really highly degraded or not So napples, uh, the dense na na napples, or the uh, D napples, so are heavier than water, and we've already talked about TCE. You'll be reading a civil action, and I'm writing the prologue about it. It was great because it was better living through chemistry. It was used for dry cleaning solvent. Uh, PCE or PERC is still used. I was in Cyprus, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, and they were just starting to get rid of PERC. So uh, Perkus uses a dry cleaning solvent. It works great on electronics because this is why it's called dry cleaning is you just don't use water, but you're still using a liquid onto it and it just dissolves everything. Uh, when Dean apples spill, as I talked about already, is that they can go down gradient from aquifers into there. One of the things is they keep going down and if they find like a hole or a crack or a fracture inside of say an aquitar, they'll move down and they'll keep moving into there. Uh, if you remember from the elm apples, they were in the Vedo zone in this upper part of the water table. Dean apples go through the entire Vedo zone and through the unconfined aquifer and they can get into confined aquifers. They're much more of a bigger mess. Um, so when I mentioned leaking underground storage tanks, lust and how we clean those up, well we remove the, the storage tank here and we clean up the soil, but once that Dean apple, it just keeps going down and it creates a very large problem. So a much worse problem than uh, what we would see with an elm apple. So, you know, the, it continues to sink until the, all the Dean apple is consumed as residual or until it's stopped by a layer of small port throated materials. So here in this karstic features, it's pulling into conduits, it's going through fractures, it's getting into everything. And so the, the, as the volume spill increases, the depth of penetration often increases and there can be substantial lateral migrations. And so this is a greater threat to groundwater than elm apples ever will be. So Dean apples, much worse problem than um, anything that's in our elm apples. And then this is just a cute little example of how, you know, the Dean apples keep going down, they'll get trapped inside of little clay lenses, and they're, they're going up gradient, and they're just a mess. So what are some examples of Dean apples? Well, we've already talked about some of them, like TCE and PCE. 111 TCA, a chloroform would be. Um, anything with your halogens, uh, your halogenated or organic compounds, any substituted aromatics like your PCBs, your uh, nitrotoluenes, TNT, your pesticides, chloridine, uh, uh, parathione, um, all of these compounds are, are Dean apples. And, you know, and I've mentioned this before, but part of the problem with uh, Dean apples is this idea of uh, is they have common names. So we've already kind of mentioned this one before with PERC, uh, perchloroethylene. It could be also referred to as PCE, but it also could be referred to as tetrachloroethylene, ethylene tetrachloride, NEMA, tetracap, uh, you know, and the names go on. TCE can be referred to by all these names. 111 DCA can be referred to as these, dichloromethylene. So um, one of the things that can happen is that you, you have to make sure you think about what the compound is, look it up, um, look up the, they may give you one name for it, and you may be talking about the same compound, they could be using a totally different name. 
uh, manufacturers do this to hide compounds or you know these are just different names for the same compound so make sure that you always look it up especially when it comes to chlorinated compounds or any of these compounds organics uh, you know they'll have a million different names um, so what are the common uses for Dean apples well they were solvent Remember we talked about like dissolves like, so they're great at dissolving fats, waxes, you can use them electronics so they won't impact your electronics. They're great for the manufacture of other chemicals, so we need sometimes we need Dean apples as a starting compound for other things. They're used for pharmaceuticals, cleaning textiles, we use them in plasticizers because um, in order for a plastic, you know, where we talked about uh, 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 like polyethylene and we talked about vinyl chloride, polyvinyl chloride, PVC and stuff like that. A lot of times what will happen is when you have a plastic container, in order for it to maintain flexibility and softness inside of it, to, to be flexible, they'll put a plasticizer on the inside layer of it and so it keeps it so it's flexible. And so those can come off inside of your compounds. I mean, I, you know, how much plastic have we consumed? I don't know. Uh, PCBs, uh, transfer components, those are all really into there. Um, and then industrial and commercial activities which produce and use Dean apples, you know, there's solvents, adherents, pharmaceutical products, metal manufacturers, tool and dye, electronics, automotive bio parts, printing, uh, we could find it in waste products, we'll talk a little bit about creosotes, uh, we'll talk about blast furnace from coke, uh, pesticide, food processing, you know, um, the old way to decaffeinate um, coffee, used uh, Dean Apple, so, you know, again, back in the 1950s, it was better living through chemistry, and so we can use chemicals to do a lot of what we, we do today. And so sources of chlorinated solvents on groundwater, well, it could be underground or above ground storage tanks, buried drums, uh, leaking distribution systems, uh, chemical loading and offloading of facilities, train spots, and then there could be intentional dumping. I mentioned the one where up in Rockford they were doing it in the 70s, but this is very common. Um, we would have, and as you're reading what's going on in a civil action, this is what they're talking about. They would dump these compounds, or that was what you did up until the 1970s. It was just you poured it in your backyard, and it would just go away, and you were like, hey, good. So, you know, so it was just the common way for disposal of these compounds. So you can find them in landfills, settling ponds, um, land farms, injection wells, dumping places into there. And why this is such a big groundwater problem is they are highly volatile. They have high densities, so um, uh, so they're, they're, so they turn into a gas. So that's one of the reasons people would dump them in the bath would be because they could dump it and then it would just, you know, go into a volatile and they were like, oh, it's God. Um, they're highly dense, so they would just sink immediately. Um, into the ground, and you're like, oh, it's out of place, out of mind. Uh, low viscosity, so they, they're, like, when you pour it versus water, it just moves really fast, so it, it just disappears. Uh, low interfacial tension, uh, so interfacial tension is, you know when you drop a water bottle, a water droplet onto a piece of plastic and it forms like a bubble onto it? That interfacial tension is where the bubble, where the, the drop and the plate come together. So if they can stick really well, it'll form kind of a flat surface, but you ever see where it bubbles up and it forms like almost a perfect round ball? Well, that means that the two compounds are not, uh, uh, they have very low interfacial tensions. They don't want to mix together versus if they can spread out on top of each other. And so um, we'll talk about more about this one later on. Uh, high relative solubility, so compared to the MCLs, uh, like TCEs, uh, solubility is at 1100 ppm, but it's uh, MCL is only at 5 ppb. And so relatively, it's not soluble because it's a Dean apple, but it is so soluble, it's more soluble than it's MCL. So it'll cause, if any of it dissolves into water, it'll cause a problem. Uh, low partitioning into soil materials, and uh, it also has low degradation, which we've already talked about.